Hello, my name's Apex Jeff, and welcome back to the Red Dead Redemption Port, and also welcome to the channel if you're new here. Um, so, I'm back at the ranch now. I ended the last video on Blackwater. Uh, as I said in the last video, I'm aiming for this to be the last video of the campaign. And then I'm going to do Undead Nightmare. Um, but I'm going to do that in like a few weeks time. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, let's get into it. John, we got a telegram from some lady friend of yours, a Bonnie something or other. Something you ain't telling me? Bonnie McFarland. She's a friend. Mm. Saved my life when I went after Bill and nearly got myself killed again. Oh, now you two's in the habit of sending each other letters. How very nice. It weren't nothing like that. What's it say? I don't know. I can't. Well, you know I can't read. Give it here. You read that thing out loud. I ain't hiding nothing. Dear Mr. Marston, stop. Need corn sacks. Stop. Emergency. Stop. Weevils and moths ate entire county supply. Stop. Can you help? Not exactly the most romantic request now, is it? I guess not. And she saved your life, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you're gonna have to help her and her family out. We've got a plentiful supply of corn sacks over near the silo. About the one thing Uncle didn't manage to have stolen while we was gone. Okay. Hurry back, John. And John, what's she like? Well, uh, you know. A little bit like you, I guess. She's a woman in a man's world. <laughs> <laughs> That's Laura Corn. Damn. Should meet this McFarlane woman. Oh god. Well, come on then. Let's get going. I don't think I can let you go off again without me. Fair enough. I'm glad of the company. You only had to ask. Ask? I was waiting for you to ask me. I thought you'd want to keep an eye on the boy. Oh, while well, you were off cavorting with cowgirls in the next county? I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack has seen enough of me for a lifetime. So, <laughs> is she married? This is Pawnee McFarlane. No. What does she look like? I don't know. Pretty normal, I suppose. Normal? What? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself John knows how, uh, how to save face. <laughs> Another pearl of wisdom from John Martin. I sure do miss those. I never took you to the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. You heard what she wrote. It's just some corn. She saved my life and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. Why did they have the time? She found me half dead on the side of the road and took me to the doctor. Most folks were left me there. Half dead from what? Bill didn't take so kindly to me visiting on it now. Bill never did like surprises. How was he? Same as he was when we left. Angry and dumb. Taking his revenge out on the world. People down there was really scared of him. Of Bill? You gotta be kidding me. He was only frightening if he was afraid of dumb fools. Bill weren't so bad, but when Dutch went crazy, Bill took it hard. For a while, we all thought we'd found something right. A better way to live, but it was just a lie. So you saw before they did. Maybe, but they was still kind of a family. A family that left you for dead. You knew the truth, John, and they hated you for it. Where did they take you? Who? Those government bastards. Where did they hold you and Jack? I ain't sure. They kept their eyes covered there and back. Can't have been too far from here, though. They treat you right? It ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head, John. You're forgetting your marriage proposal. Very fun. No, they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me. Sons of bitches. It wasn't them or being there. I didn't care about that. I've been 
been in far worse situations. It was the wait. I didn't know if you was coming back. Of course I was coming back. You were only supposed to be gone for a couple of days. It took longer than I thought. The only thing Bill and Dutch was ever any good at was not getting caught. Can't you get those horses going any faster? <laughs> I started thinking you'd gone back to them. That life's over. I hope you're right. Bill, here we go. Javier, Dutch, they're all dead. They don't... I wanted them to finish what he was saying, but... Here's what Kane, it is. thank you so much. We lost the entire harvest. Miss McFarland. I'd like you to meet my wife, Abigail. Oh, ain't you quite the gentleman all of a sudden. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Marston. Likewise, thank you for saving my husband's life and for teaching the miserable goat some manners, among other things. I didn't teach him anything. I know better than to try to change a man. You should meet my father. Oh, people can change, Miss McFarlane. John and I have to believe that more than anybody. This is a decent first harvest for you, John. You should be proud. That's good land you got there. How are you feeling, Mrs. Marston? From what your husband told me, it must have been awful for you. I've been through worse, and I knew he'd be back before too long. He can't cook a meal to save his life. Abigail, in my darkest hours, when I was most homesick, just the thought of one of your rat meat stews kept me pushing forward. Well, about as amusing as a weeping saddle sore, ain't he, Mr. Farland? If you're gonna start yammering about women's work, John, I'd say you might be in the wrong company. I'd say so, too. I never felt so outnumbered. I hope she paid us for that, by the way. <laughs> Ma'am? Well, we're a lot lighter now, that's for sure. So that was the famous Bonnie. That was her, all right. She's pretty. She's normal, like I said. Well, you always want to see a rancher. I'd have thought she'd be just your thing. The perfect rancher's wife, if I ever saw one. I already got a rancher's wife. I'm only teasing. I like her. And I'm glad she saved your life. Most of the time, anyway. The McFarlands are good people. She did blood better than a shepherd's sunset when she saw you, though. I have that effect on women. You clearly had one too many blows to the head. You ain't wrong about that, Mrs. Marston. That's quite a ranch they got there. That'll be us someday. As soon as we get back on our feet. I don't know, John. How many times can we start again? An outlaw and a working girl. We ain't exactly farmers. We are now. Forget that life. It's over. Do you really believe that? We have to. It's the only way we'll ever have a future. The life we led, that doesn't go away. It's never over. You think those government men are just gonna leave us alone now? The old gang's dead. I did what they asked. And that's it? A life proud for killing? We're back together, ain't we? Until they decide you owe them something else. Sometimes I think I was the stupid one for believing I could get out. Maybe Dutch, Bill, and Javier were just being honest with themselves. You ain't perfect, John, and I sure ain't. But you're better than they are, than they were. Maybe we can't change, but we gotta try, for Jack's sake. Even if we have to start again a hundred times, it's better than going back to what we were. How's Jack doing? Angry, upset. He's been through a lot. I hope he's gonna be all right. It's gonna take time. For a while, his world was safe. Normal, even. Then it got turned upside down again. You ain't saying much about it. I've tried to talk to him. But how do you explain any of this? What do you say when he asks about Uncle Bill and Uncle Dutch? They were his family when he was a little boy. He hides away in those books of his. Wouldn't you? It ain't like the real world's done him many favors. He's just been kidnapped. He grew up with the gang. That's no lie for a boy. We did our 
our best to protect him. Come on, John. He saw things no boy should see. Well, now we got a chance to make it right. We did good today, John. I guess I better go fix us something to eat. Hey, Jack. Hey, Paul. Need a hand with that? Uh, no, sir. I got it. Looks like you have. You know, you're real good with them tools. Thank you, Paul. You'll make this land real nice one day. Me and your mother will do our part. By the time your turn comes, hell, this could be the nicest farm in the county. Maybe, Paul. Just gotta learn to shoot straight or you'll get yourself eaten by some animal. Very funny, Paul. Thank you, son. <laughs> Soon it'll be quail season. We should have some fun then. Is there anything you don't like shooting, Paul? I well, ain't met the thing yet, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know. You can even <laughs> put it in one of them books you read. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do that. Today, John Marston stopped shooting. Now, I ain't no literary man, but I don't think that'll sell. People like shooting in them things. I think you may be right there, Paul. Yeah, that is true. So, uh, you ever hear talk about them machines that can make a man fly? Well, sure, Paul. Everybody knows about that. You know, they're going to be bringing one of those machines around the country next year for a demonstration. One of them machines can turn men into angels. One of them machines can turn men into angels. John! Come here! John, come here, quick! Oh no. And so it begins. Take a look at that. Jack, go into the house, lock all the doors. Whatever happens, don't come outside, you hear me? Whatever happens. Okay. Come here, son. Whatever happens, keep the doors locked and your mother inside. Promise me, son. Promise me. Who is it, Paul? It's just some old friends. Me and Uncle take care of it. And you go inside and you keep the doors and the windows locked. I hear you. Then run! Yeah, run, boy! Well, old man, looks like things is about to get settled once and for all. So it seems. Christ so it Christ. seems. Come on, old man. I'm gonna need you. Yeah, fuck you. You best shoot me now. Damn. This is over. Go check on your family, boy. gonna do now what's wrong what's happened stay inside you hear like I said there'll be more coming Paul what do they want I don't know son whatever it is it ends here oh, look how mad oh, they damn it they're gonna kill us aren't they no I ain't gonna let that happen Rufus get out of here bro No, not uncle. Uncle, are you all right? Damn. Damn it. I'm a hit. You're right, Jack. No, not again. You can still run away.
there, Uncle! I'm gonna get you out of here safe! Ain't time, John. I ain't gonna make it off this porch anyhow. You take Jack oh, and... no. <laughs> take them and... <laughs> Don't worry about me. Let's get him out of here. No! Uncle, please! Oh, my God! They killed him! Come on, son! Ain't nothing we can do for you! Ah, oh, poor Uncle Man. Why do Rockstar like to kill off the characters? We're leaving the farm. I'll watch from the silo. You two go to the barn. Get the horses ready. John! I'll meet you there! This way. We'll make a run for the barn. Stay close and keep your eyes open. Oh, up on the hill. I see him. Get behind something. You won't take us away again. Oh god. Hey. Come on. <clears throat> now listen. Jack, Narlin, get on this horse. Get out of here. Go find a place to hide. You're coming with us, Paul. I'll catch you up. You keep riding and don't look back. And don't be worrying about me, you hear? Now get going. You stay out of trouble, John. Ain't no trouble, Abigail. Ain't no trouble. I love you. I love you. Now go! Get! <laughs> Oh, God, this is it. Yep. Damn it. I hate this so much. Why the Rockstar like to do this? Don't let me activate that, huh?
Fuck you, old man. Fuck you. Oh, you're not gonna like what you find, kid. You ain't gonna like it at all. I don't think we have time to rest. Right, we ain't ending it there. It's time to avenge John Most. Right, let's start this journey. You need help? Hello, sir. You work with the government? You one of them agents? Sure, son. <clears throat> Why you ask? Did you work with a man named Edgar Ross? I have something for him. Edgar Ross? No, but. Well knew of him. A fine man if he wanted results. Won himself a chest full of medals. I think he went and retired about a year ago. Last I heard, him and his wife moved out to a cabin on Lake Don Julio. Lucky guy, getting to take it easy. He's fighting crime in this dump, that's for sure. <clears throat> well, thank you for the information, mister. He has no idea what our intentions are. <laughs> Nope. Right, so we're, ha we're um, at his residence. But I remember what happens. He's an actually here. So let's go ask his wife where he is. Don't worry, ma'am. We're here to help him. We're not going to kill him. I promise. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, young man. Hi. What are you doing out here? Are you out visiting the lake with your family? Uh, no, ma'am. I was looking to deliver a letter to Edgar Ross. Oh, that husband of mine. That bureau just won't get its talons out of him, even though he's retired. Edgar gave them some of the best years of his life. They ought to let him retire in peace. 
They'll not rest till they've killed him with worry, and he's such a sensitive man. I'm sorry, I shouldn't get so angry. I don't suppose any of this is your fault. There's no need to worry about him nowadays. Well, where is he? He and his brother Philip went hunting on the south side of the San Luis River. Be careful crossing over. They were saying it was dangerous. I sure will, ma'am. And don't worry about a thing. I'm sure your husband will be just fine. <laughs> oh yeah, he's gonna be so fine. <laughs> Alright, let's go um, talk to uh, Ross's brother. Right, we're here. And I just crashed into a fucking rock. Can you piss off? Sir. There you go. Let's talk to this guy. Hey there, mister. How's the hunting? Well, pretty good, son. Got me a few rabbits, coyote, elk. Still looking for some trophies for the parlor. I've got a letter here for Edgar Ross. You know him? I, I heard he was down in these parts from his wife. Well, I know him. He's my brother. Gone down river, duck hunt. Must be a pretty important letter to have come all this way. Oh, yes, sir. Real important. <laughs> I'll be Very on my important. Way home as soon as I deliver this message. You best be off then. Just don't get on his bad side. He's got a filthy temper. I thought this letter was important. Right, let's go finish this once and for all. Okay, we made it. It's time to end this. And this bastard is gonna die. Let's do it. Excuse me, you Edgar Ross? Do I know you? Forgive me for startling you, sir. I have a message for you. My name is Jack Marston. You knew my father. I see. I remember your father. I've come for you, Ross. <laughs> and you, boy, have sure shit found me. You killed my father. Your father killed himself with the life he lived. You killed him. I saw you. You keep saying that. You sent him to do your dirty work. Then you shot him like a dog. And I'll shoot you like one, too, you little piece of trash. Now get out of here before I kill you as well. I ain't going nowhere, old man. I gotta do this. Well, we we ended the game. <laughs> um, if you've been here since the start, then thank you so much. Uh, if you're just watching this because you're bored, also thank you. Uh, I will be doing Undead Nightmare in a few weeks, so stick around if you want to see that. 
and subscribe. But for now, Red Dead Story is over. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.